Hi guys, and welcome to the first video of the digestive system. In this video, we're going to talk about the oral cavity, the tongue and palate. So when we, when we start talking about the digestive system, the first thing you guys will think about is where does the digestive system start? It basically starts with your mouth, where, where you're going to receive the food that you need to digest. Now, when we talk about the oral cavity, the oral cavity is divided into two parts, oral cavity proper and the vestibule. And the proper means this is the actual oral cavity that's going to receive the food. And when we say vestibule, it's basically the wide areas that are bounding the oral cavity outside of the teeth and gingiva. So the vestibule is basically this area outside. It's where you can put your fingers in here while your mouth is closed. It's basically here outside of the teeth and the gingiva. And laterally, you have your vaccinator muscle, the buccal bed of fat, and you have your cheeks, the inner lining, the mucosal lining of your cheeks and so. So vestibule is outside. Remember your... Um, respiratory uh, system you have the vestibule of your nose it's basically the wide area so this is what we refer to as vestibule when we talk about um, some of the structures of anatomy this is the vestibule of your mouth outside and this is the proper oral cavity now when we talk about the proper one the oral cavity we need to know the 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 the, uh, the borders of uh, the oral cavity so thinking about the oral cavity you have superiorly your palate, inferiorly, your tongue, and laterally, you have arches. And of course, you have your teeth and um, your gum or your gingiva. Now, uh, when we talk about the palate superiorly, we are talking about two bones that mix up the palate. And of course, you guys by now know that your upper jaw is made by the maxillary bone. It's the most important bone at that point here. Now, if I say palate, it means there is a process of maxilla that makes up most of the hard palate. So what do we gonna call that process? It's gonna be called the palatine process of maxilla. So basically this is going to be your palatine process of maxilla. And then you have another bone that participates in the formation of hard palate, which is basically this, and that is the palatine bone. Yeah, it's a palatine, but this is a one process, or um, I mean, one from each side, and uh, that process is going to be horizontal. So if I have palatine bone, I'm going to give the name um, horizontal plate to that bone. It makes the hard palate. And if I have a process for the maxilla, that's going to be the palatine process of maxilla. So these both are doing your hard palate, which is the roof of your oral um, uh, proper ca uh, uh, oral cavity proper. And then, of course, posteriorly, you have your soft palate. And then down, you have your tongue. Now, talking about laterally, um, uh, laterally, you have two important arches. Um, one that comes from the palate to the tongue and one here, the anterior one, and one that comes from the soft palate to the pharynx. So the one that comes from the soft palate to your tongue, we call it palatoglossal arch. And the one that comes from the soft palate to the pharynx posteriorly is what we call the palatopharyngeal arch. And in between them, we have your uh, tonsil, all right? The palatine tonsil, because we're talking about the palate. All right, so these are the important boundaries so that makes your um, uh, oral cavity proper. Now, moving on to talk about the tongue, you need to know that there are external features of this tongue that everyone needs to know. When we talk about the tongue, we have anterior two-thirds, and that is basically a lingual part. It's, it's, it's actually oral. It, it's what lies in your oral cavity, which is up until this point. Now, what about the posterior one third? Basically, this part is what faces your throat, is what faces your pharynx. It's posteriorly. It's a vertical part. Now, here we're looking from the top view. If you look at this um, uh, picture of real cadaver, you will see that this is basically running vertically, and this is the flat part. This is the, the, the lingual 
um, part. This is your anterior two thirds of the tongue. It lies in your oral cavity. But posterior one third is basically vertical and it faces the pharynx posteriorly. And it's very important to know that because there will be differences in the um, innervation of both of them. Um, so it's important to know that. Now, um, the, the very important feature of the anterior two-third of the tongue is that the, what we call the tongue papillae. The name papilla means there is an elevation in a structure. So here we have elevated structures and we are giving them names based on the shape of these papillae and they are important because they have taste buds. They will help us to taste the food. Uh, so now um, uh, we have uh, names of these uh, tongue papillae and I want to help you guys to remember the names and location of these papillae. Uh, so basically the names of these papillae are named based on the, the shape. How do they look like? So at this point here, um, uh, uh, lining the terminal sulcus that separates the posterior one third and anterior one third is the circumvallate papillae. Uh, circumvallate means um, it's a truncated cone. It's it's as if it's a cone, but with without this upper part of it. So this is a cone shape, but this is a, a cone that without the upper uh, uh, pointed part of the cone. This is what means the circumvallate papillae. Uh, coming from back to front, we have a type of uh, derm, uh, sorry, uh, tongue papilla that aligns the, the terminal sulcus. It's anterior to the terminal sulcus. And at this point here, this is called the filiform. It's conical shaped. It's parallel to the terminal sulcus. And they don't have taste buds. So remember that the cone-shaped ones, they do not have taste buds. All right. Following that, we have here papillae that are basically scattered in your tongue and um, in the tips of the tongue and margins of the tongue. And they look like uh, mushroom shaped and they, we call them fungiform papillae. How will you remember the names of that? You can remember them by a mnemonic, which is, can you fill me with fun all right so can you fill me with fun so it's the circumvallate filiform followed by fungiform all right so you will ask your friend this question and she will reply to you saying fool you i'm not gonna do that so the foliate is basically at the sides of your tongue they have taste buds all right they they uh, they le they look like a leaf all right so can you guys see those lines this is how the elevated part of the mucosal lining of the tongue look like so these are the foliate papillae all right so you have circumvallate and then filiform at this point and then fungiform and then on sides folio I'm not. So the foliate papillae on both sides of the tongue. All right. Now, when we talk about the muscles of the tongue, you guys need to remember that we have four intrinsic muscles and four extrinsic muscles. And these muscles are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve. So uh, a motor innervation, all right? Um, uh, so the intrinsic muscles are superior longitudinal, inferior longitudinal, transverse, and vertical. Now, what is the function of these muscles? I will help you to remember them. The longitudinal ones are shortening. So I have superior and inferior longitudinal ones. They are doing the opposite thing. They are longitudinal, but because they are longitudinal ones, all right, they come longitudinally. When they shorten, they will shorten the tongue, okay? So superior and inferior longitudinal muscles, they will shorten your tongue and retrusion because if you shorten the tongue, it will retrude back. However, the two other muscles, which are transverse and vertical, if they contract, 
they were flatten or elongate. So this is the way you will be able to remember the function of intrinsic muscles. So if these are the intrinsic muscles, it means they are going to change the shape of the tongue by shortening or elongating or flattening. We are changing the shape of the tongue. However, to move the tongue, we need to attach the, mus the tongue itself to the bones that surrounds it so that we can change the position of the tongue, whether we bring it outside, up, down, or backwards, it needs to be an extrinsic muscle to do that. So what are these muscles? In order to remember the muscles and their functions, we need to know what are they attached to. They must be attached to bone up, bone down, bone back, and bone to the front. So we have four soldiers today, and they are going to help us to know the names of these muscles and their attachment. The first one is your genial tubercle. So we have a genial tubercle in your mandible, and that is going to be the first attachment to the tongue. The next one is going to be your palate, all right? The third one, it's gonna be the styloid process. So this is up and this is back. And this is in the front. And then posteriorly, the, the fourth soldier is going to be your hyoid bone. Can you guys see the hyoid bone? So this is down. This is back. Your palate is up. And your genial tubercle is in the front. So how are we going to name them? The name is going to start with the bone and ends with glossus. So what are the extrinsic muscles? We have the genioglossus from the genial tubercle. We have the palatoglossus from the palate. We have the styloglossus from the styloid process. And then we have the hyoglossus from the hyoid bone. What is the function? Very simple and easy. The genial tubercle is in the front. So it brings the tongue out. All right. And then the next one is the palatoglossus. The palate is up. So it brings it up. And then the third one attached to the styloid process. So it brings it back. And then the hyoid bone is down, so it depresses the tongue. So this is the function of the muscles of the tongue. It's quite simple and easy if you remember where are your soldiers and how are they pulling the tongue. And if you guys look at this picture again, you will see that from the styloid process to the tongue, this is the styloglossus. From the palate to the tongue, this is the palatoglossus. From the genial tubercles to the tongue, this is the genioglossus. And from the hyoid bone to the tongue, this is the hyoglossus. All right, this is how you identify these muscles. All right, next to that, we need to talk about the blood supply and innervation of the tongue. It's very easy and simple if you try to understand how do we name them. Now, if you guys look at the tongue, you have anterior two-third, which is your body and tip, and then you have posterior one-third, which is the root of your tongue. Like I said before, this is a part that faces your pharynx. It's basically facing your oropharynx. Now, what would be the nerve that supplies a tongue, which is a glossus in Latin, and the part of the tongue that faces the pharynx, it's going to be the glossopharyngeal nerve. So glossopharyngeal, because here is my pharynx, this is the glossal part, and that is the glossopharyngeal nerve. It supplies both general sensation, which means pain and temperature and touch, and it also supplies a special sensation. So that would be general and special, which is your taste. The both of them for the posterior one third of the tongue is going to be done by the glossopharyngeal nerve. However, for the anterior two third, I have different innervation. The general one is going to be by lingual nerve, and it makes sense because this is a nerve that supplies the tongue. So this is a lingual nerve for general sensation. However, the taste is basically coming from a branch of facial nerve, and you guys know that the facial nerve uh, takes um, 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 its roots from um, nuclei in your brain stem, which is the salivary nuclei, and these are responsible for taste. And that branch is basically your corda tympani. So corda tympani is the, the taste sensation in the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, and the general sensation is lingual, which is basically tongue.
Now, what about the blood supply? You think about your blood supply, you guys know that the common carotid artery is what takes care of everything up. So as the common carotid artery bifurcates in, in the neck, giving you external and internal, the internal carotid artery goes to the cranial cavity and supplies the structures inside, and the external carotid artery takes care of head and neck. So you guys know that the external carotid artery gives three branches anteriorly, two branches posteriorly, one from the middle, and it ends up as two branches, maxillary and superficial temporal. All right, so maxillary and superficial temporal. What are these three branches? It's the superior thyroid and then followed by lingual, followed by facial. So lingual is going to go to the tongue. So as the lingual gets out from the external carotid, the lingual goes all the way deep to the hyoglossus muscle. And once it goes deep to the hyoglossus, it's going to give me three branches. One that will decide to stay posteriorly, and that is going to be called dorsal lingual branch. Dorsal in Latin means posterior. So the dorsal lingual branch will take care of the posterior part. And then followed by, as it proceeds, it will give sublingual branch below the tongue to give supply to the floor of the mouth and sublingual salivary gland. All right. And then another branch that goes deep, and that is the deep lingual branch for anterior part. So what is the blood supply of the tongue? We have dorsal, we have deep, and then we have sublingual, all of them lingual, lingual, lingual. So the deep anterior part, dorsal, posterior part, sub for the floor and sublingual gland. Now moving to the palate, and we already talked about the, the, the hard or, or bony palate. Now we need to talk about the soft palate. Soft palate is quite simple because it's a muscular structure that is formed of five muscles. Now, as you guys think about the soft palate, remember that the, the aponeurosis of the levator palati muscle, it's basically an, an fascia, and all these muscles are attached to this fascia. Okay, now we have five muscles, two up, two down, and one in the center. The one that's in the center is your muscularis uvula, and it tenses the uvula itself. Now I have two muscles up. These are the two palati sisters. I have levator and I have tensor. So levator palati, sometimes they call it levator villi palatini, and the tensor palati, and sometimes they call it tensor villi palatini. Now, the two palatine sisters are important because as they contract, they are going to bring your soft palate up. And what does that mean? And where do we need that? We need it when we want to swallow the food to seal off the nasal cavity because you guys know that in the pharynx, you have nasopharynx, then oropharynx, and then laryngeopharynx. Now, if I'm eating food by my mouth and it comes in here i don't want the food to go up and go to the, my nasal cavity so thanks to my soft palate it's going to seal off the nasal cavity and the food proceeds and goes down as i swallow the food so thanks to the palati sisters that they are going to tense and elevate the soft palate and close off the nasal cavity and prevent the food from coming back and uh, these are going to be the two muscles uh, uh, of the soft palate that are posteriorly. Now I have another two muscles, and these muscles are attached to the structures that are down. So if you think about what would be down, we have the tongue and we have the pharynx. So the muscles are going to be the palatopharyngeus and the palatoglossus. So I have here the palate. So from the palate to the pharynx, I have the palatopharyngeus. And from the, 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 the palate to the, to the tongue, I have the palatoglossus, all right? So if you guys look at the soft palate, all right, and you have a fold here and a fold there, so the palatoglossus to the tongue and palatopharyngeus, all right? These are two muscles attached to the soft palate, and they are also important to... Uh, help us to swallow the food and elevate the pharynx and move the tongue toward the toward the pharynx to help the food 
uh, to move do, during swallowing. Uh, so when we talk about the, so remember again, you have five muscles attached to the, the to the palate. Remember your uh, tongue, you had um, uh, in your tongue four muscles, intrinsic and four extrinsic, okay, by four soldiers. And here you have five muscles, one in the center, two up, palatai sisters and two down related to the tongue and pharynx okay so all these muscles are supplied by the cranial accessory ner nerve of vagus except the tensor so the young uh, uh, palate sister she is very tense and she is um, um, stress stressed out so she does not like to get at uh, uh, its innervation like the others she likes to be different so she's going to get its innervation by mandibular nerve all right so the tensor palatai is different she is going to get her innervation from the mandibular nerve all right now when we talk about the uh, innervation of the palate uh, the hard palate it means that we have innervation and you guys remember that this is your upper jaw it means this is your maxilla maxillary bone it means your branches of hard palate should be coming from maxillary uh, nerve and maxillary artery but there is one thing i have greater palatine and that goes to the hard palate because the hard palate is very big so the greater palatine will be for the hard palate however the lesser palatine is going to be for the soft palate because it's smaller and both of them are coming from maxillary and the same thing happens here which is the greater palatine artery coming from maxillary artery gives to the hard palate and the lesser palatine goes to the soft this is quite simple and easy to grasp however i have a small part here all right and a small part here around the incisive foramen we we give it another name because that gives um, innervation and supply to something else here so that is nasopalatine so it's yes mostly greater palatine but this because it gives supply to the nasal septum we're gonna call it nasopalatine if it's a nerve however when it's an artery we call it sphenopalatine artery so yes everything from maxillary whether it's artery or nerve the greater uh, palatine is for the heart palate because it's bigger and there is a small part here, we call it nasopalatine. And for the artery, sphenopalatine. And because the smaller of the two parts of the palate is the soft, so the soft palate takes innervation from the palatine. Another thing that helps you to, re to remember, S for S, so lesser palatine artery or nerve supplies soft palate. The last thing I want you to know is that we have two other branches coming to the soft palate one from the ascending pharyngeal branch of external carotid and one from the ascending palatine branch of facial, all right? So remember when I said that this is the external carotid artery, it has three anterior branches and it ends as two terminal, yeah? The terminal was maxillary and everything today is maxillary. Remember that we had, uh, this was the superior thyroid, this was the lingual and here we have the facial okay so the nearest one is the facial so the facial will give me the ascending palatine okay branch so this is from the facial everything else from maxillary and i have another one which is ascending pharyngeal it's a branch of external carotid so from external carotid we will give a branch from facial we will give a branch and the rest of them coming from maxillary from maxillary again it's going to be everything and from the facial we have ascending palatine from the external carotid itself, we have ascending pharyngeal. All right, I hope you guys grasp the concept. It's a very easy concept. And um, um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and watch the next videos of the module. Thank you.